Black Girls Podcast, where we discuss all things mental health, personal development, and all the small decisions we can make to become the best possible versions of ourselves. I'm your host, Dr. Joy Harden Bradford, a licensed psychologist in Atlanta, Georgia. To get more information and resources, visit the website at therapyforblackgirls.com. And while I hope you love listening to and learning from the podcast, it is not meant to be a substitute for a relationship with a licensed mental health professional. for joining me for session 21 of the Therapy for Black Girls podcast. So today I want to talk with you all about how racism impacts our mental health. You know, given the recent events in Charlottesville and just again increasing racism and increasing white supremacy and the increasing violence that I feel like we're experiencing. It just is feeling very tough and very heavy. And I know many of us have been feeling like this for a very long time. Um, I have to be honest with you, it was very difficult for me to even feel very connected to anything really this weekend because it just feels like Every time you turn around, there's something else happening. So I, I want to talk with, with you a little bit about how this impacts our mental health and really give you all some tips that I'm also trying to practice myself to try to make sure that I can continue to show up for myself and my family and for you guys in ways that I hope um, strengthens our communities and our families um, and want to encourage you to do the same thing. Um, So really, when you think about just all of the things that we have to go through just being human, right? We deal with losses in our lives and difficult relationships, um, struggles at work and school in different areas. And so it's really hard to just be human sometimes. But then when you add on top of it, the rampant racism um, and hate that, that exists just because black people exist, it really can become overwhelming and just downright exhausting at times. You know, so when things like the event in Charlotte, well, the multiple events, so first just the rally that was organized in general, but then we see this person um, drive his car into a crowd of of people, counter-protesters who were fighting against what the racists were fighting for um, and actually kill someone and and probably hoped to kill many more people. You know, it just feels, the world feels very unsafe and unpredictable right now. And I think that that is often the most significant impact that racism has on us is that it just makes everything feel very unpredictable. So it can often feel like you're not sure what's going to happen when you wake up or go to bed at night. I think you look at co-workers and just random people on the streets differently because it's like, okay, were you one of those people in Charlottesville this weekend? Do you have plans to join something like this? I think that there is a sense of paranoia that permeates when things like this happen that feel very difficult to kind of shake off. And some of it shouldn't be shaken off, right? I mean, some of it is really healthy. Others of it, other parts of it are not very healthy. And so I'm hoping that some of what I will share with you today will really help you to be able to kind of continue to move forward in your life so that we can kind of continue to fight this much bigger thing that's going on in our world and continue to take care of ourselves and each other. So one of the the first things, so I have some tips and suggestions that I've talked about in articles in the past and also have a really great piece that is circulating currently online that's called Surviving and Resisting Hate, a Toolkit for People of Color. And of course, all of this will be included in the show notes at therapyforblackgirls.com backslash session 21. But this is by Dr. Adamus and Dr. Chavez Duanis, who run the IC Race Lab, and they have some amazing, incredible information that I will also share. Um, So one of the first tips is related to your behavior online. So 
you know, you often hear people talking about the fact that sometimes you really do just have to disconnect. So I know we want to kind of stay up to date with all the information and we want to make sure that we don't miss something that's happening, but there is still a way for you to stay connected without watching every video or clicking on every story. Um, Because sometimes we really do get into an information overload. And I feel like that's what I was approaching this weekend, which is why I felt like I just needed to disconnect and and not really, you know, kind of continue to be engaged with all of the information that was coming out this weekend. So really do pay attention to how much time you're spending on social media and on various news sites so that you can, you know, continue to take care of yourself as you need to. The other tip, a second tip is to turn off autoplay on your social media. So, you know, if you go into your settings, there's a way that you can set up your social media profile so that videos don't automatically play when you scroll by them because you don't ever know what other people are going to be sharing. Right. And so you don't, you know, want to get triggered by a violent video or, you know, some really graphic image, then it is best to turn off the autoplay and um, you know, so that those graphics and images don't just pop up on your screen without you having to do at least an additional step to get to them. I want to remind you that it's also okay to be really afraid right now. Um, You know, this is some scary stuff going on and it feels like it continues to just get worse. And so if you feel like you need to stay put for a while or change up your routine for a little while, it's okay to do that and to do whatever you need to do to reestablish a sense of safety for yourself. But with that, I also want to remind you that joy is resistance too, right? So the goal of terrorists and people who do things like this is to make us so afraid that we change our behaviors and we don't want to keep thriving, that we, you know, become a shell of ourselves. So it's okay to go to the concert that you planned on going to and Continue to laugh with your family. Watch your favorite movie. All of those things are okay. Don't allow situations like this to rob you of your joy. Of course, you know, things will feel very difficult in the moment, but I want to to try to encourage you to not get stuck there so that in the end, you know, this evil doesn't win. We continue to live our lives and we continue to thrive. Related to um, online behavior, something that I also forgot to mention is to try not to go back and forth with the racist trolls who will hop into your mentions. Um, You know, so I know that social media allows us to kind of connect with one another in ways that are really cool, but it also gives trolls... um, like ready-made access to us as well. And so no matter how reasonable or how rational or accurate your argument is, you typically are not going to change the mind of a racist in 140 characters. It's just not going to happen. So I'd like to encourage you to actually use your energy in ways that helps to take care of yourself instead of spending very much energy on somebody who um, really is really there to just kind of get a rouse out of you. I also think that when things like this happen, it's important to remember um, the little things. So things like eating, sleeping, and bathing um, can sometimes fall by the wayside when big events and, you know, things like this happen. And it's important to kind of continue to take care of your bodies in these really small ways so that you can do the work that the community needs you to do. Or additionally, I also want you to pay attention to the messages that you are are giving yourself about how you get involved in activism. Um, so I think it's important not to diminish the role that you can play in achieving social justice or make yourself feel bad that you can't show up for the marches or you can't do X, Y, and Z. You don't have to be doing all of those things to consider yourself an activist or to be playing a very big role in the work that needs to be done. So I think that it's important to kind of find your lane and find the place that feels like a good fit for you and show up in that way. So whether that means calling your legislators or whether that means sending 
supplies to the people who are marching or getting involved with some community program in your hometown. There is something for all of us to do and no one role is bigger or better than any other role. Um, So I think sometimes people can kind of beat up on themselves like, oh, I couldn't do this, so I'm not really doing my part. Well, yes, you are doing your part. And my activism looks very different than yours and all of that's okay. So I want you to remember that. I also think it's really important to find supportive other people that you can talk with about what you're feeling and honestly have some of those conversations. So I know there tends to be um, a tendency to kind of just ask each other, how are you? And, oh, I'm fine, without really making space to have conversations about how we're feeling. But I really would encourage you to be more intentional with your conversations right now and really check in on the people in your lives. So those were the tips that I had to offer. But like I mentioned, I also wanted to share this surviving and resisting hate toolkit for people of color by Dr. Adamas and Dr. Chavez Duenas. So their first tip is stay physically and psychologically healthy by eating healthy, sleeping seven to eight hours a night, taking breaks from social media, and staying physically active. Number two, stay connected to individuals, communities, and organizations that affirm your humanity. Number three, listen to your gut and remember that a healthy cultural suspicion Suspicion of white supremacy, people and systems they created, has allowed people of color to survive during the darkest times of our history. Number four, focus on your goals. Finish your projects. Do the best you can at work, school, and home. Being successful in whatever you do is in and of itself an act of liberation and resistance. Number five, Focus on change and organizing with the people closest to you, including family, circle of friends, neighborhood, and place of employment. Focusing on the big macro picture may feel paralyzing. Number six, give yourself permission to experience what injustice naturally evokes in you. All feelings are acceptable, including anger. Honor it. Anger has led to positive change. Number seven, Listen and validate the experiences of people of color with different backgrounds from your own. Number eight, the burden of oppression and injustice is too heavy to carry on your own. Do what it takes to keep yourself going while remaining committed to racial and social justice. Number nine, focus on one breath and one step at a time while knowing and always keeping in mind that our ancestors never gave up. Their resistance, resistance and fight led to the changes we enjoy today. And number 10, remember that the system does not get to determine your worth, dignity, and humanity. Never forget that you matter. So again, I hope that you can incorporate these tips into your lives right now and help to encourage your friends and family to encourage these tips into your lives so that we can continue to take care of ourselves and continue to take care of each other. Um, There's definitely a lot more work that needs to be done, but we all need to be well to do that work. And so I hope that this will serve as a reminder for you to do the work of taking care of yourself as well. Again, if you are looking for a therapist in your community, then please do check out the directory at the website. You can find that at therapyforblackgirls.com backslash directory. I think that especially right now, it can be really important to find somebody to talk with about how you're feeling. Um, So if it doesn't feel safe or comfortable to do that with family and friends, then now definitely would be a good time to reach out to talk with a therapist. As always, I'd love to hear your feedback and how you are taking care of yourself over on social media. Make sure to use the hashtag TBG in session. You can find us over on Twitter at therapy for the number four B girls. And you can find us on Instagram and Facebook at therapy for black girls. I'm looking forward to continuing this conversation with you all real soon.